When it comes to giving, India is a global outlier with a larger percentage of its population making charitable donations than any other country at a similar economic level. There's also a new corporate social responsibility law that mandates companies give 2% of their profits towards development. While these are encouraging signs, 800 million Indians still live under $5 a day. Our next speaker is someone who's taking the fight against poverty head on. Joining me is Zarina Skruvala. She's the founding director of UTV. A few years ago, she and her husband sold the remaining shares of their media empire to become full-time philanthropists and founded the Swadesh Foundation. Serena, tell us your personal story from going from someone who was running UTV to someone who's now running the Swadesh Foundation. What inspired you and what changed for you? Okay, so this is a really tough act to follow. I mean, after Miss Power, I think, wow, amazing. Um, so they will, um, so we divested UTV, which was literally, you know, it was like my baby. It was my first job right out of college. We built it from three of us to like, however many we were when we ended. Uh, we sold it in um, Feb 2012 and um, to the Disney uh, group, who I knew would nurture our baby and really look after it, and they're doing a fantastic job. And in fact, after we sold it, amazingly, they asked us to continue and continue to run the company, the joint entity, the Disney UTV entity. And we were doing that. And I loved media, and it was great fun. I was very excited. But suddenly I realized that something had happened to me and basically I just could not get out of bed <laughs> in the morning. And um, I realized that somewhere down the line I was a little, a little bit heartbroken that my baby had been, you know, given to someone else to look after. And I started feeling restless, like really restless. And I joined a philosophy class at that point which is when I walked into the philosophy class, it's a new Acropolis, and I just on the right-hand side of the wall, there was this tiny little coat which caught my eye, and, and it was on the AV, actually. And it said that when you let go of who you are, you become what you might be. And I knew, and it was this tiny, it was so tiny on a huge wall, and I knew, you know, that coat was there for me. And it was about 7.30 in the evening in June 2012. And I went home and I told my husband, Ronnie, that, you know, it's been 27 years. I need to quit. And I need to do something else. And he was, like, shocked. And, like, but what will you do? And I said, I have no idea. But I just know I have to quit. Because if I don't quit, then I won't do something else. And I didn't have the courage to quit before. I knew that I needed to do something else. I just didn't have the guts to do it. And that coat really spurred me on, and it's amazing. Um, so I did quit. And a week later, you're not going to believe this, after 27 years, I left UTV. And I left it in a week because of two reasons, Deval. One was that my team had been with me for seven years. They knew every thought in my head. And they were way better than me at it. So I wasn't leaving anybody in a lurch. And the second thing is, if I didn't leave in a week, I wasn't sure if I'd have that courage to, to actually do it. So I joined Shaheen Mysteries TFI. I actually enrolled for two weeks along with, and I was 52 at the time, with 23-year-olds. And I did 14 days in a course meant for fellows who are going to teach in class. And it was fantastic fun. But suddenly I realized, oh, damn, this is not for me either. And I was in a panic. And I told Ronnie, you know, like, I'm really nervous. I don't think this is for me. I don't know what I'm going to do. So then Ronnie told me, why don't you take our NGO share, which we had for 12 years. It was a very tiny NGO at about 12 or 15 people. And we had been doing very tiny work, but very good work in some villages in rural Raigad. He said, why don't we invest? And why don't we use our time and passion and lift a million people out of poverty? And I said, oh my God, that sounds exactly like what I want to do. So that was it. I mean, that was the moment. That was the inspiration. And we started working with this dream, and to which we added one more line, which made it even more difficult, in five years. And to which I changed it to every five years. 
to lift a million people out of poverty every five years. So this was now July. So I July, uh, so end of June, July, I, we coined this thing, this phrase, this mission, this vision, and it was completely nuts. I mean, it was completely ridiculous. And the more ridiculous it is, I mean, honestly, the more I love it. So, but then we realized that, gosh, we know nothing about philanthropy. We know nothing about poverty. We're media people. So we went on this literally like a voyage of discovery for till May 2013, so almost a year, we traveled the length and breadth of the country. We met, we went to villages, we went, met amazing philanthropists, we met NGOs, we met government people, and we really studied poverty. And we studied the amazing work that had been done thus far. And we had took out, I think, a few key learnings, okay? So the first learning was, that there is no silver bullet to eliminating poverty. And whether we like it or not, and we didn't like it, it was really scary, we will have to do a whole bunch of things simultaneously if we actually want to achieve this goal of five years, one million people. And we realized that we, st we immediately zoomed into the geography that we had been working in for so many years because we had built the most important thing over there. And that is we had built pockets of trust with our community. You cannot work without trust. So we didn't have to go around building and meeting people for the first time. These community members, there were about 39,000 people we had impacted over the 12 years. We met them and we engaged with them and we designed a 360 degree based on their needs. So it was water, it was sanitation, it was health, it was education, and above all, it was livelihood. And how to make agriculture cool for young people. It's a huge problem. I can tell you we've not cracked it at all. We've been working really hard on it. It's tough to create livelihoods in rural India that meet the aspirations of young people. So this was one learning. No silver bullet. Got to be an integrated approach, 360 degrees. Second thing is we learned that we need to collaborate. There's no way on God's earth we can do this on our own, even with all our past experience. And frankly, in media, I mean, you learn how to collaborate. That's what it's all about. And so we collaborated with like 35 amazing partners today. We have 35 amazing, amazing partners who work with us. Over 50 programs are being delivered currently. And the last one is when we went to many, many villages of people who are doing fantastic work, we realized they had been there for the last 20 years. So for the last 20 years, these amazing people have been working with the community, and they were still working with the community. And we decided to add that slightly audacious exit clause, the exit strategy. So today, this is where we are. Today, we have, um, I mean, uh, we've reached a population of 500,000 people in one lakh households in about 2,000 villages. We work with a grassroots execution team of full-time staff of 300 people and 1,200 community workers who we've trained and we pay a stipend to. They're amazing women. Some of them, they were in there in the video. And that's where we are. Sorry, that was a really long answer. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Your passion and energy is Sorry. <laughs> so one of the approaches, in addition to what you just said, was really engaging the group that you guys work with the most, which yeah. is Bollywood. Yeah. We have a fantastic film of Amitabh and Jaya Bachchan no. visiting some of the villages. That was an amazing day. <laughs> You know, that was, that was an amazing moment because we went to uh, Amit Ji. I, I called up Jayaji and I said, can we just, can you fix a meeting with Amit Ji? Because he's super busy. He's like crazy busy. So she very sweetly did. And uh, we asked him actually to come and be our guest of honor at our fundraiser, which we did last year. 
And he said, yeah, of course I'll do it. And, uh, and we said, you know, it'll take two hours at a time. Don't worry, we know how busy you are. And he said, no, but wait a minute. Uh, what about taking me to your villages? So I said, but uh, it'll take the whole day. I mean, there's no way you can come. It's impossible. And I, I also was getting concerned because he had so many commitments. But he made it. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget, there was a, a, a police constable who was with us, not constable, I mean, he was a police officer who was with us, escorting us around the place. We kept it a top secret, but as you can see by the end of it, crowds had gathered. And he said, uh, Madam, aapne to itihas bana diya. Which basically means you made history in the village. I mean, it was just, it was an amazing day for us. No, no, that's fantastic. Yeah. And what other skills from the media world did you actually translate into philanthropy? Okay. So, um, I think the first thing is there are amazing commonalities. Amazing commonalities between media and philanthropy. And the first one is to know, respect, and love, if you can, really identify with, unite with, your customer, your consumer, your community. If you don't do that, you can't do philanthropy. If you don't do that, if you don't know your customer, I can't build a brand like Hangama TV or Bindas, or I can't do a film like Swades, or I can't do a film like Rangde Basanti, if I do not know my the consumer, the, the community, and if I do not respect them, and I do not find out what are their dreams and aspirations, I cannot, I cannot have a relationship with them of any kind. So that is our first learning. The second learning is something that we instill really, is that just because you're doing philanthropy or does not mean you settle for second best. Always demand the very best from everybody concerned. Demand the best from your partners, so whether it's Teacher Foundation, amazing. They do work in the best schools in Delhi, Bombay, and, and Bangalore. And they also do the work in the villages with us. Computer Musti does work for foreign countries, is doing computers for our children. Things like that. Get the best partners to work for you. Demand the best from your community. Do not let them go back on their commitments. If they go back on your commitment, you walk. So you treat them as equals, you treat them as partners, like you would treat anyone in the corporate world. With a heart, but they must learn that they are partners, they're equal partners in the development process. And the other one, as I said before, is to collaborate. You can't do it on your own. Collaborate with the best partners you can find. That's fantastic. Um, and, and going sort of down this path of, of giving, and, and doing such wonderful work, do you guys ever think that there is a dependency that you may be creating in, in the groups that you are supporting? Yeah, so, so that's the whole point. So if, you, if I give you my card, we have two things written on it. Actually, you should have only one thing, but I couldn't resist because both are so nice. One is rural empowerment. That's what we do. We, our most difficult task is to change mindsets. And I think all our media experiences come into play because we are trying to change mindsets of people in our village communities. We're trying to teach them to dream dreams they have not dreamt before and show them pathways to, to actually realize those dreams. That's what we're doing. We're teaching them to dream and building the pathways to achieve those dreams. So I don't, dependency is the last thing we do. We don't do charity. We do philanthropy. What does philanthropy mean? Philos. Philos is love. Anthropology, mankind, humanity. It's a love for humanity. When you love something, you're not creating a dependency. You're letting him go. You're, letting, you're teaching him to fly. That's what the point of philanthropy is. If you're doing anything different, walk away because you're doing it wrong. Great. Well, thank you so much, Zarina, <laughs> okay. for your time and your fantastic Thank work. you. Thank you.